In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. In the waters of baptism, our sister Luska died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister that she may share in Christ's victory and let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation.
It is with sorrow and grief that today we gather by the mortal remains of our sister Luska to entrust her now to the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reality of death with all its pain and sense of loss confronts us at this moment, but as we are united in sorrow, we are also united by our faith. Confronted with the reality of death, we must allow ourselves to be confronted with the reality of our faith in Jesus and in his resurrection. We gather also to support one another and to encourage each other with the assurances of faith in the res resurrection of Christ and in the power of his love. To you, to the family and friends, all of you who are here, I want to extend my prayers and sympathy. We pray with you at this time and we pray also for you. May the presence of Christ and his church give you comfort and peace. Please be seated now and we will have the remembrance followed by eulogy. This morning we gather here on a very sad note. I am hoping that I'll be able to get through. I'm trembling like a leaf. A dear friend, Luska. A true friend, a confidant, a sister. Luska and I met when she joined the staff at the Costa Man in Nomasi in 1978. At work, she was always made sure that her I's were dotted and her T's crossed. Luska made many outfits for my daughters and took them modeling, as she called it, I called it modeling, to many tea parties and suppers. In February, Luska spent the day with me and she was in my bed. She said she wanted to rest, and I allowed her to do that. I could hear her breathing at one time and sighing a bit. Then it went quiet. So I called her name. I said, Luska? Luska? When she answered me, I said, you? Don't die on my watch here. You don't worry to die on my watch. And she said, Lottie, it will happen someday. And when it happens, I want you to do a tribute there. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. But we talked and we talked about various things. Luska would always refer to her illness as a demon. She said it was a demon. And that her Lord, her Father God, would deliver her in his time. She said, Lottie, don't worry. Jesus was on the cross for all of us. And if I have to bear my pains, I will bear them. She said to me, listen, Look at my phone, get my phone. I have something there I want you to read. And I'm going to read it now. My pain is my own to feel. My battles, my own to fight. But you being here remind me that I am not alone in this vast, terrifying world. It whispers that I am worthy of love 
even though I may be both broken. Rest in peace, my dear. I know that you are at peace with your God. Thank you. Good morning, all. I have to find my glasses first when you get to our stage. My name is Jeff Evanson, and the title of my offering is called The Era of Luska Compton. Because despite what the pamphlet says, I know her as Luska Compton. I was invited to a green room play reading sometime during the year 1977. I was immediately drawn to the camaraderie and energy of this very mixed group. And the group was very mixed indeed. Some expatriates, some locals, some whites, some Negroes, and some in between. Some well off financially, some poor, some employed gainfully, some not but all were intent on making a contribution to the art form in whatever way we could. A small faction, which included our beloved subject, branched out on its own uncharted path into fun and adventure, and was ably led by one Wendell Smith, and included characters like Merle Nels, Peter Allen, Chris Innes, Harriet Williams, Alfred Jordan, Juliet Fields, Sharon Compton, and myself. Sharon was Luska's younger sister. There were others too, but this was the main core. We would travel throughout Barbados' local nightlife, wreaking havoc at every bar who allowed us to sing raucously well past closing times. Most times, the owners themselves joined in. We also visited and tantalized the parents of each group member much to their enjoyment and encouragement. Our parents were so accommodating, including Sharon and Luska's mom and dad, who, like all the others, seemed to look forward to our impromptu arrivals. We would go to pick up Sharon, but spend two or three hours chatting with mama and dad before heading out. Luska would be in her bedroom reading her Mills and Booms, and she had a collection. She was so shy but not for long. When Sharon left for the USA, we continued to be welcomed at the home, coaxing this still shy youngster out of her comfort zone. As fortune would have it, her dressmaking skills saw her being drafted into Green Room's web as props and wardrobe mistress. And that is when the story started. The transformation that took place seemed slow at first, but it was not long before she, the constant teasing and humor that existed enveloped this poor soul and saw her emergence as the character of beautiful expression that she was to become. We unearthed her wit, her talent for creativity, her love for partying, fun, and friendship. During this time, she worked at Manning's as a clerk in the accounts department with Lottie, sorry, Ms. Withers. And I recall her being featured in a local newspaper as being supreme in her customer service. Always well attired and stepping like she would master fly in her high heels. But when she donned a costume and the music started to play, that trim and slender frame always wooed the judges with whatever characterization Robert Weeks could come up with. In those days, Robert Weeks was a prolific designer and Luska was to become a legendary portrayer. But that's not all. She also assisted with sewing, gluing, and finishing many of the other costumes for the bands we were masquerading in. From Philippa Tomlin's first offering of Eatmana down through the years to Cranston Brown's later offerings, 
She was always queen of the band. Her life was wrapped up with Manning's green room, crop over, and included some other off the record experiences, not fit for offering here. Green Room went into dormancy, and Luska got married and moved to Trinidad. But she never ceased being our girl. Every time she came home, she would stop by my business on Tudor Street to say hello and catch up or to reminisce. The last time I personally saw her was at my home for my 70th birthday celebrations. And, and along with all the others there, we had a blast. In her latter years, I know she had developed a love and a passion for our Lord and Savior. And I take comfort in knowing that she now rests in his arms. Luska, we will always love you as we cherish your life and our fond memories of you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kenny Bavell, and some of you might be too young to remember when I was involved in Crop Over with Cranston Brown as deputy band leader to him, and then we started our own band, and I was band leader to phase two. And I'm very honored this morning to be here to share in what could have been a sad moment, but we choose to celebrate a wonderful life this morning. And I too would like to offer my condolences to the family of, and friends of course, colleagues of Luska, and like, like Jeff, uh, I always knew her as Lus Luska Compton, and I'm seeing here quite a mouthful, so I'm not, I'm not going to even attempt to go into the hilaria because I'm not familiar with her at all. Um, but Luska Compton, I can say, from the time I met her, um, she came to Cranston's band with Robert, as, as you would have heard, as designer for her costumes. And this was around 87 when she came to, to us when Robert joined uh, Cranston as designer. And what I remember about Luska on meeting her is that she would always laugh at my jokes. I fall in love with anybody who would laugh at my jokes. Sometimes it's a tough call, but if you give in to it, I, I fall in love with you. So I can say this morning, I love Luska Compton. As she joined the, the group as obviously queen of the band, when uh, Robert joined us as the, as the designer, immediately Luska's character stood out among all of us. Uh, those of you who know about mass and producing bands and so on would understand that nothing goes smooth. And on the Sunday night before the Monday of crop over of Kaduman, you would have the kings and queens on display. And many times we were not ready because we were working on the band. And some pips would fly, and some warm thoughts would be exchanged, and so on. And Luska was never a part of that. Always quiet, always paying attention to the detail, 
and making sure that everything was right for her costume. And even in the midst of all that, helping with the construction of the general costumes for the band. So it was almost immediately when we recognized um, her creativity, her passion for mass, and her ability to build the, the costumes. And as you would have heard, Luska's contribution to the queen of the band area especially is unmatched in, in Barbados. I'm saying thanks now to the NCF for their tribute that they paid on the NCF's Facebook page. And I just want to quote from that tribute some of her outstanding achievements when she won the queen of the bands. And quoting from the NCF's tribute, playing queen mass primarily for designer Robert Weeks, Lusco won the first national crown, her first national crown with independence fireworks in 1983. And also won the title for blue box car in the costume entitled Lady Cadaver in 1984. Luska continued to play in memorable costumes such as Bad Contrivance Worse Than Obia in 1986 and Flight of the Phoenix in 1990. That was one with Cranston, that was one of the most outstanding ones. Her winning ways continued with Eruption of Mount Pierre in 1991 and Golden Chattel House in 1993. Luska also represented Barbados in Curacao in November 1991 and Martinique in 1992. So she not only played her trade and performances and portrayal here, but also across the Caribbean. So once again, I say thanks to the NCF for recognizing that contribution. They also made the um, recognition very public in 2016 when the NCF awarded Luska uh, the honor of being one of the crop over stalwarts for that year. So from the early days of participating in the Queen of the Bands competition, she was always the one to beat. But it didn't stop there. Her influence her style and grace could be seen even up to today across the portrayal of the individuals now, which are the big costumes um, being presented today. You can see the, the participants almost mimicking and influencing and being influenced by the style and grace that Luska established way back in the day. She did not only have a sense of creativity, uh, of quiet, and of helping everyone around her. Luska, in combination with Robert and the A-Team, designed, produced, and portrayed not only a costume, but a story a message with traditional elements or some aspects of our history with each color celebrating our culture. Luska's commitment to mentorship and community engagement has inspired many young artists. Through her excellent portrayal and outreach, she has shared her knowledge and passion, fostering a continuation of her skills in the many areas of her involvement in culture. Luska Red Lee accepted her role as leader when she joined with Robert and Alfred Elias, the king of the bands at, at the time, uh, Alfred who's also passed, um, along with myself when we formed the band phase two, um, and she became a director with phase two. 
along with Marlon Rice Boeing and Trevor Chase, some of the very popular names in mass up to today. So as we reflect on Luska's journey, we are reminded of her resilience and unwavering spirit in every presentation and every performance. Luska, we thank you for your tireless dedication, your boundless creativity, and your unyielding love for mass in Barbados. Let us celebrate Luska today, not just as an artist, but as a true champion of our culture. May her passion ignite the hearts of many, and may the rhythm of masquerade continue to pulse through our island, echoing the spirit of Luska Hilaria Joseph Daniel, to us, Luska Compton. Luska, we love you. Thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Rachel, Rossi's sister. Ron Lee Travis said, and I quote, it is not what you take with you when you leave this world behind you, it is what you leave behind you when you go, end of quote. One of my fondest memory of Luska is watching her cut the material for a dress she designed for me. She had this amazing ability to make everyone feel special and love effortlessly. So, how do I pay homage fitting of this incredible woman she was? I am strengthened by her lively personality the life she shared and the life she shared with us. I have her encouragements, her prayers, her love in my heart, and her voice, the calmness of her voice. Lushka had an infectious passion for God that pervaded all she did. Christ was the centrality of her life. There are words of happiness about the treasured time we all had with Lushka. There are words of beauty to describe her individuality and the way she carried herself. There are words of sorrow to try and communicate what we are feeling now she has left us. But most of all, there are words of strength, of hope, of power, of resilience, and of tender love. Words that can bring us all together to cross these choppy waters and come out on the other side better for it. It was an honor, a privilege, and an enriching experience for the Daniel family to welcome Luska as one of our own. Her presence brought warmth and joy to our gatherings. Her love and kindness made a lasting impact on our family, and we will forever cherish the beautiful memory we shared. With her, my brother found a friend, through love, a wife, and a wife, and we gained a sister, a daughter, a mother, an aunt, and genuine friendship. Her passion for details, design, and sewing was inspiring, as she always brought creativity and depth to every conversation. But more than that, her commitment to God and others demonstrated her passionate nature and left a lasting impact 
on those around her. Luska's mission was one that made a great difference in the lives of many people. The gathering here today speaks loudly of the kind of person she was. She was always there for those who were in need, whether they needed clothes, food, or simply wanted an air that would listen without judging, condemning, or prejudging. She had and she had a reassuring presence and was well known and admired in our com community. Luska was God fearing, authentic, generous, humble, respecting of self and others, and a model of integrity. Thinking of Luska automatically brings a smile to the face of those who knew her because she loved life. She always had a contagious smile. She continually expressed love and charity. She taught others around her the importance of having faith in the one true living God, about whom she was so passionate. All of her relationship was transformed by one single ingredient, love. The most essential ingredients for the time here on earth. The best remedy for difficult events that turns our life upside down is to give love freely. The death of my sister really brought home to me that when we leave this world, our material goods, roles, titles, and profits do not go with us. What truly counts? are the lives we have positively touched by loving truly. When you love truly, only then have you fully lived. Because Luska make a positive, positive impact on the lives of others, Luska lives on. Though we say our farewells, we are celebrating the remarkable life she lived. The love she gave and the indomitable spirit that will forever live in our hearts. Though she may no longer be with us in person, her legacy lives on, and her memory will continue to inspire us all. So thank you, Lus dear Luska, for the great privilege of having allowed us to share your wonderful life. I know you are with the angels, Thank you for reminding us that the present moment is precious and that we should make the most of it by trusting God and, living, and loving truly and generously. Spread your wings and fly proudly. You have earned it. May her memory be a source of inspiration, reminding us to cherish every moment and to stand by our loved ones in their time of need, and most importantly, being prepared for our Lord, Lord's return. Thank you, and thank God. Um, and now I am going to read a tribute from my mom to her daughter, Luska. Luska, loving, loyal. So L, loving, loyal, U, understanding, S, a skillful symmetries, C, conscientious, caring, A, adorable, action-oriented. As I sit quietly with my thoughts, I feel your presence like a gentle ache in my heart. You brought so much, life, so much life, joy, and love into our lives. And the memories we share are treasures I hold dear. I remember your laughter filling our home with the warmth of your spirit during family gatherings. You had a unique way of me making everyone feel special, and your kindness was a light that brightened 
even the darkest days. It breaks my heart to have to write about your life now that it is ending. I was really looking forward to your return to Grenada and for your recovery and to share some more wonderful moments with you. But things did not go as expected, as I now only have the memories of you. I remember your some biblical advice that you gave me when I speak to you about my challenges. I will miss you. I remember the baked goodies that you will, that you will carry for me whenever you baked at home. I remember the motivation that you gave me when I felt down. I remember how easygoing you were and never make anything a problem. I remember that you did not refuse to sew for the community folks, even if you had a pile of other work to complete. I remember how you would join in family cookups and would still be gracefully willing to share the food, even after cooking. Though you may no longer be with us in body, your love and the impact you made on our family will never fade. I see you in the stories we share and in the love that continues to bind us. Luska, you are a very precious gift to my son and our family. Thank you for being a beautiful part of our lives. I will always cherish you and carry your memories in my heart. You were a daughter-in-law who was like a daughter to me with love, Geraldine. Good morning, all. I'll make it short, Father. <laughs> I'm Luska's sister, Sharon, and I'm supposed to do eulogy, but y'all have done my eulogy for me, so I'm gonna make this short and sweet. I was in Trinidad with Luska in July, spent almost a month there, whilst her husband, he took a break and I took over. <laughs> Although my sister was in a lot of pain, you could see it. She would journal, she would write three times a day. She could barely stand, she could barely get to the bathroom, but she was sure that she truly believed that the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would heal her from the inside out. She had that strong faith. She never, never, never wavered. Never. She never complained. She just did what she had to do. Her husband, he took awesome care of her. Like the vow said, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, he literally took that and did the husband thing. He bathed my sister. He cleaned my sister. He did everything for her. He cooked for her. He, he pureed the food for her. He did everything. He did all the running back and forth. He lifted her up one day when she couldn't walk. I took her through the door and put her in bed, changed her, took the wash basin, washed her down, and did everything for Luska. Everything. I did what I had to do for my sister. Everything. But she still believed that God is going to heal her. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will heal her. She had that strong faith and she never wavered. If she did, she never said a word. She never complained. We would go to the cancer treatment center. She never complained. She would sit and wait there for hours. We'd leave at 6.30 in the morning. We wouldn't get back until 6 in the evening. She never complained. Now, she truly, truly, truly believed that she would be healed. Maybe she got her healing a different way because she left this earth to go over. I know it's morbid, but I took a picture of my sister when we went to the morgue. 
they just wanted to see her face. Her eyes were open. She had a, a, a like a, right here, a line came down. And she had like this kind of smirk on her face, like, like a wow, you know, like kind of like, okay. You know, like whoever that came for her, whatever happens, but she didn't look like she was stressed or in distress, but she believed. She truly, truly believed. Everybody here who says something about my sister had it in this eulogy, but y'all already said it for me. She was like that. She could cook, she could sew, she could do anything. Any, any, anything. And she didn't complain, she just did it. If she complained, she complained to herself, but my sister was like that. Truly, truly gonna be missed. Truly gonna be missed by all of us, by her husband. Because she has so many ideas, so many things she wanted to do, both of them to do. But like I said, one thing I could say about my sister, she truly, truly, truly have faith. Truly have faith. Like I said, right now she's probably in, in one of those mansions doing the curtains right now. You never know. Because there are many mansions in God's kingdom. But she truly believed, and she's truly at peace, truly. Like I said, I saw her face, and she, you know, she truly at peace. She, and again, she never took pain pills from the doctor. She always said, I don't want any pain pills. Only in the last couple of days, they give her the morphine, 10, 10 milligrams, and she didn't, she didn't want it. I said, you got to eat to take it. She didn't want it. She didn't want it. Until she went to the hospital and had to give her something. She was in so much pain, but she didn't want the pain pills. She truly wanted to go through it. That was her cross, and she carried it. So give God thanks and praise. She was truly a believer, truly, truly a believer. And that's my sister. So I thank you all. I, I had a first-hand look to see what people go through. And cancer is, it rips your body. But she never, never, never complained. Never complained. So she's with God right now. So I give him thanks and praise. Whatever she's doing. Sometimes I think she's still around. Sometimes I can feel like, is she next to me or saying something to me? So I get, thank you all for, for coming and thank you for this day. And thank you for remembering my sister. And those days that we used to have with the Green, Green Room Theater players. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greetings all. What can Greetings I say? Greetings all. What can I say about my friend Luska? Luska and I go back a lot of years. I'm sure most people would have said a whole lot about her and everything I endorse that would be true. So I'm not going to make this long and laborious. My relationship with her was special. She was a special human being. A lovable person. And Luska had a heart of gold. She will help, she will give, sometimes to her own detriment. But this is this was Luska. You either take her or leave her. So the Lord has chosen to take her back to himself. I thank God for letting her to us and all who know her well and she was there too. I'm sure they all feel the same way that I do at this moment. Give God thanks for having her, having known, known her and she's in, in, enriched all of our lives and touched our lives in many ways. All I can say is may the angels receive you, my darling. Rest easy. And if the time shall be that we will all meet again, I will see you in paradise, where we will all assemble and continue the other stage of our existence. Godspeed, my love.
O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant, Luska, whom you have called out of this world, and because she put her hope and trust in you, command that she be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated, and we will have the first reading now. This is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immorality. Slight were their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and approved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be in the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on, on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Lord, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. If you would like to use the office with the AC, I believe Francis can help you to get to the office. Put the AC and cool down, right? And get some water. I think you should, at least for a, for a moment. Well, okay. There's a nice question coming from, from our gospel today that I decided to share with you from the friend of Jesus, from the two sisters, but actually Jesus was the friend of the whole family, of Martha and Mary and Lazarus and the whole family. They were close friends. And look what one of the sisters is saying. Martha, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, I do believe we, we sometimes say the same when death happens in the family. Jesus, where are you? If you had been here, my brother, my sister, my daughter, my child, my father, my grandparents, they would not have died. But they did. And they are dead now. So where have you been? Where are you? If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, you know, we have all the rights to say that to Jesus and to express our pain and our disappointment, our sadness. Yes, but let us remember that Jesus is not responsible for, for our death, for any death. I think it's good to to remember that, especially when we take part in the funeral service, and to, and to think once again where it comes from. Jesus never created death. God never created death. It doesn't come from him. No. When he created everything, and we do remember that, that beautiful reading from the Old Testament, he created heaven and earth and the, the sky and with the water and the birds and all sorts of living creatures. He never created death. It's not God's fa fault that we die. And we should never blame God for it. But at the same time, I do believe we can express to Jesus, like, like Martha and Mary, what is happening in our hearts. And we can, we can open our hearts even if we don't understand everything. And even, even if it doesn't look always right, what we say, we still have the rights to, to, to express it, like Martha did. Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I am disappointed with you, and you are such a friend. You used to eat with us. We always gave you a bed when you wanted to stay on your way to, to Jerusalem and on many other pilgrimages around the, the countryside. We looked after you, we did your laundry, we fed you. You are a friend and you could not have come to stop it, to prevent this. But look, even saying those things when we do, Jesus is still, is still not the one to, to blame for it. Death is not from God. Death is from turning away from God. Death comes as a result of sin. And we remember that story as well. After the first sin of our parents <clears throat> in paradise, when they did what they were not allowed to do, death comes. And the toil of work and sicknesses, and everything, what we call sin. So Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, she says, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And then Jesus said, your brother will rise, like he will come back to life, he said. Martha said to know, I know he will rise in the resurrection of, on the last day. And then Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the way. I am everything. And then he makes this spectacular miracle. He brings back death Lazarus, Lazarus to life. I would not be expecting anything like that happen to us today or at, at our times, in our lives. But the message that we can find in this gospel is this. Have faith, and on the last day, 
Jesus will raise your life, your body, will raise you to life again, each and every one of us. And this is what we actually believe. This is what we say in our creed. We, we believe in life everlasting, in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And Jesus is going to do it. And the only thing that is needed for him to do it is faith. That's why he's asking her friend, Martha, do you believe this? I am the resurrection of, uh, and life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? If you do, you will rise up. You will live again. I mean, your body will live again. Do we believe this? I believe this, this moment, this day, and this ceremony challenges us and our faith. And that's good. Because faith is the key to eternal life. And faith allows Jesus to raise us up on the last day. Amen. Please stand. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and the dead. We pray for Luska, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, for all those who believed in Jesus, that they may see him face to face. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of you who are here, for the family and friends of our sister Luska, that, she may be con that you may be consoled in your grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord. Hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, for our sister Luska. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of your redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now let us pray together as Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for our sister Luska 
And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Repeat now, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Save us all and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Luska in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person die, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace. Let us take our sister to her place of rest now.
amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see the grace that taught
We're gathered here to commend our sister to God our Father and to commit her body, her elements, to the earth. In the, faith of spirit, in the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, let us offer our prayers now for Luska. Before I start the reading, I'd like to express sincere condolences to Mrs. Compton and the family on behalf of my wife and I. We've known one another for many, many, many years. Their wedding anniversary falls two days after ours. And I know I've not made as many numbers as she has so far. But we have a long association. I'm really honored to be here. I couldn't make it to the funeral service, but I'm really honored to be here to do at least this part. Luska, who I've known for many, 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 many years. I'll take the first reading from scripture for this committal. We, we who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. Trusting in God, we pray together for Luska. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this is this congregation, this group of us here will dispose the disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore let us console one another in the faith of Christ. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present them to God Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Luska, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight, she will live forever. Forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Oh, bless the earth, the holy water. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Humble, Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the soul of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. You want to start the commission? We can start one of the hymns if you care to at this time. Go ahead, just go ahead. You can fill in.
We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spirit shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessing of May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you.
to the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord the lord which made heaven and earth he said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved the lord which keepeth Yeah.